brilliant singer-songwriter. Mr James Arthur will be here. Yay! James Arthur will be in the house. Uh, but first, I'm here with a singer-songwriter who sold a staggering 30 million records around the world. And that's just the very beginning of this amazing career. It's a brilliant James Arthur. Yay! First of all, welcome to the house. Thanks for having me. Uh, and, and it's been a fantastic excuse to open a bottle Absolutely, of cognac for yeah. you as well. Yeah, exactly. This, look, this is beautiful. Where did your I'm taste already of... already half cut, by the way. <laughs> Where did your taste of cognac come from? It's quite a recent thing. Um, I was around a few footballers and they recommended some Remy Martin to me. And, yeah. Uh, and I fell in love with it. It's, it's beautiful. It chills you out. Uh, mm. While you're drinking that, I'm going to do you a, a fantastic little pumpkin soup. I'm going nice. to pumpkin and lime soup. Uh, because we're going to do a, a vegan dish for you this one. So we're going to do this with a little bit of flatbread to go with it. Nice and simple. We take the, take the pumpkins. You can use onion squashes. Any colour you want, like this. And we're going to chop it all up and roast it in the oven. I've got a wood-fired oven behind me. that This will do in a normal conventional oven in about 40 minutes. But first of all, I mean, what a career. Oh, bless you. Thank you. But it's been hard-earned, hasn't it, really, for you? Because, you know, music has been yeah. your love all your life. Nothing else, really. I mean, no, never had a plan B. Really, it's been my um, it's been my whole life, like you said. Yeah, from a from a young lad. I thought I would actually, um, kind of make it into the industry in a rock band. Maybe because I, I I love my rock music. I was in indie bands and I had my emo phase and all that. Um, so yeah, it's, it was it's kind of uh, interesting that I had my breakthrough on X Factor, something I never saw myself doing. My mum bribed me into auditioning, so. Was there a moment? I mean, I'm just got, I've got the yeah, squash yeah. here. We're just roasting it in the oven. I'm just going to put it in the blender with a, a little bit of uh, uh, veg stock and a, a little bit of this um, uh, vegan yogurt. Was there a moment when you were doing the thing like the X Factor? Because I, I mean, I have to say, I watched you on it and I saw you from all the way up, and I was in thrall because I'm a big fan of your music. We'll get onto your album in a minute because I think the, the, the sound that you produce for your voice is amazing. Not just that, you write your own stuff as well. But was there a moment when you're doing that where you think? This is this is something unbelievable. The, during the X Factor. Yeah. Was there a halfway moment, or was it? Did it? Did it really hit until? Yeah. After you, after the final, or whatever. There it was, was a there was a couple of just unbelievable moments. You know, um, just getting such good reactions every week from the judges. You know, people like Gary Barlow, who I'd um, admired. You know, growing up as a songwriter. Um, and my mentor was a pussycat doll on the show too. It was, <laughs> it was just it was just a wild the whole thing was was wild to be honest. And um, I think it was the week that I, I was in the bottom two. So there was a very strong possibility I was gonna go out of the show. And then of course I got through and it was at that point that I was like, I've got to win this show now. I've got to kind of But you you know, you know, one thing that's fascinating when you speak to musicians and successful ones, like I said, 30 million mm. records sold. Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost the backstory. Mm. Makes you what you are, don't you? I mean, you're not yeah. giving it. You've got you had to genuinely work for it. And you, among everybody that I've spoken to in terms of musicians, you've probably worked. You, you, it's such an interesting story in terms of before you even yeah became well, famous. I suppose the fact that I'd, I'd been plugging away in bands, as I said, and uh, doing the kind of grimy clubs, one man and his dog sort of thing, that that set me up. Yeah, ten years of sort of trying to break break through. I think it, um, when I got my opportunity in the X Factor. I had the the work ethic and I and I took my opportunity with both hands. So that was, you know, I'm I'm grateful to the fact that I uh, I kind of knew what I was doing when I got on stage. By the time I got there, well, it certainly sounds like you did. So look, we've got in here. So the lime. I've got some of this. Like I said, some of this uh, vegan yogurt. We've got some stock. We just delicious. plenty of salt. The key to a, a soup is salt. So lots of salt. We like that. Plenty yeah. of salt in there. Yeah. Black pepper. And I'm just going to blend this all up. So all I've done with the, the, the pumpkin is roast it off in the oven. So like I said, in, the, in this oven, it's going to take about 15 minutes because this is really hot. Mm. Um, at home, you're looking for about half an hour. Put it in a blender. There we go. So you've got, look at the color of this. Oh, look at the color of this. That looks very nice. So where do you get your inspiration from then, from writing? Is that, is that something that was recent or was that something that has always been there? Because, I mean, this leads me on to the, well, the amazing music that you've, that you've made over recent years, but the, the new album. Where, do, where does this passion for writing come from? I think my passion for writing has always come from... Fr from a young age, I realised I was a bit of a kind of ADHD kid, you know, so I, um, my attention span wasn't, wasn't the best. Very hyper, a lot of nervous energy. And whenever I'd either listen to music or um, attempt to make music of my own, I, I always felt like I was really present. 
and in the yeah. moment. And uh, I took inspiration from my life, really, um, from the things I've seen and experienced. Um, yeah. And that's now, but also in the future, because I mean, we'll, I'll show you the album now, because the, you're going to have a listen to one of the tracks as well. This is the new album. Yeah, yeah. So this is album number... This is four. Is it four? It is four, four. Yeah. You're not yeah. lost count already. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> yeah. studio album, it's four, yeah. I've got a couple of little, like, uh, stuff I did on indie, you know, indie stuff I did beforehand, but, uh, yeah, four, four studio album now, yeah. And, and so, yeah, I mentioned the fact that this tells you a little bit about your past life as well, but uh, your, your future life, because one of the, the, the songs that we're going to listen to now is, yeah. is... Tell us about that. Where did the inspiration of this come from? Well, you know, as, as a songwriter, you're always looking for interesting angles and concepts to come from, you know, and um, I just had this idea to write a letter to my... You know, during the lockdown, we all were forced to be introspective, you know, reflect, yeah. process, um, stuff that had gone on. I, I never really sat still for like eight years and looked at what I'd achieved or, you know, the things I'd been through. And um, yeah, we were forced to do that in the lockdown. And um, so I was thinking about all sorts of stuff and being a dad was one of them. Would I be a good dad? Like, what about the stuff that's been written about me? What about the mistakes I've made? Like, would my daughter, you know, look at me in a way that's... Uh, which, you know, how would she feel about all that? So I started, there was so much that I could get out of that particular concept, you know? So, um, yeah, I called it, it's called Emily, which is the name that I decided my daughter would be called, because um, it's tough finding a name that works with Arthur. Um, it's a bit of a, bit of a harsh surname. Um, yeah. Well, you, you've, you've said the, tri the title to the song. Shall we have a listen? Just, just check out this. And I, I can tell you this, before you enlist to it, this is going to be huge because I've been listening to it for the week now in the car and I didn't realise that this was going to be from the new album. But yeah. congratulations on it. It's fantastic. Have a listen to this. <laughs> this is the weird thing. This, you, this is the first time you've seen that, That's isn't the it? first time I've seen it, yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen... I've seen uh, Little bits of it, but that's yeah, that's amazing to see. Tell us about the the tour. You're going to be get, setting out on the road as well. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, I was re definitely ready for a break from touring when the pandemic came about, but uh, it's been been too long sitting on the couch now. So um, yeah, I'm going to go back on tour in March. We're going to go do a UK tour, um, play a few theatres. I'm going to be playing the uh, Royal Albert Hall, which is that must be something amazing, I've yeah. dreamt of doing, you know, yeah. my whole life, which is uh, an, an absolute uh, dream come true. Well, long may it continue as well. We're going to chat more a little bit later, but here's your little soup. So this is the little soup. I've got some garden herbs. This looks like some garden. premium soup. Well, it's only a bit of roasted veg soup, but this is... this is uh, Then yeah. pumpkin oil. You've got to be careful with this. It's quite strong. Pumpkin oil? Pumpkin oil, yeah. You get the oil from a pumpkin, but pumpkin oil, it's like toasted sort of colour. But wow. It's quite strong. A little bit of that. That looks absolutely unbelievable. Mixed with a little bit of vegetable oil or olive oil is what you want to do with it. Wow. And then I've got the bread, really. So I made a little flatbread. Here we go. I'll just move this out of the way. So this is your little flatbread. Take this out. There you have it. Wow. Nice on the side. So there you have it, your nice little flatbread and your roasted pumpkin soup. Bon appetit. Done. There you go, James. Oh, nice. Thank Dive you. Dive into that one. Thank you very much. Oh, this looks amazing. Tell me what you think of that. Let's have a little go. Pumpkin soup. Shall I, shall I tear the bread You can do it? what you want. It's all your dish. You do what you want. This is overwhelming. <laughs> wow. No, that's the best soup I've ever had in my life. Really? Ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I'm going to dip some bread in it. <laughs> There you go. Mm. I'll be cooking stuffed tomato ratatouille, which tastes as good as that for James a little bit later on the show. And I'm off on a food adventure to Normandy very shortly, but join me after the break when Mr Michael Keynes will be here firing up the stoves. I'll see you in a bit. Sorry, am I meant to be, like, scoffing? You can, you can have what you want. That with a glass of cognac. Oh. <laughs> in my element here. Yeah. I'm back in the kitchen, still with my guest. It's the one and only James Arthur! <laughs> Every, the love for you in this room, fella. As I'm feeling it. Definitely, the love for you in this room. So we're going to oh, do um, a, a little ratatouille, uh, stuffed tomatoes ratatouille. 
I know you loved the soup earlier. You said yeah. it was the best soup you've ever tried. I think this is one of the nicest vegetarian dishes. If this is better than that soup, I'm, I'm excited. This is better yeah. than that. Um, because it uses really good quality ingredients that are in season. You've got beautiful tomatoes, and tomatoes now uh, grow them in the greenhouse. These are the last of the seasons, but they're beautiful. They're absolutely fantastic at the moment. So what I do with these is just take the insides out, and then scoop the insides out, chop it up, and that's what we've got there. And then what we're going to do with these is salt and pepper them. So again, like seasoning over everything, which I told you earlier, salt and pepper, and then a good quality olive oil. The key to this is brilliant olive oil. Why is what's that one? Uh, just brilliant olive oil. Brilliant. Okay. Well, this, this, is, this is Spanish. Right. right? Okay. You right. can use Italian olive oil, but just get really Mediterranean. Really good. Yeah. I, I'll I'll send you details of really really good olive cool. oils. All right. Okay. So then what we do is with the tomatoes, and then we roast these in the oven. These are going to take about sort of five minutes just to sort of roast up and warm warm up. At the same time. We're going to set off and start our two ingredients over here. So sauce, first of all. The sauce for this is garlic, a bit of chilli. Would you like spicy food? I love spicy food, yeah. One whole chilli. A whole chilli. A whole chilli. Nice. Olive oil, but a decent amount. When you get really good quality of oil, you can, you can use plenty of it. So a decent amount of olive oil. In we go with the garlic and the chilli, and you want to start cooking this. A little bit. You can use a little bit of uh, chilli flakes if you want, but fresh chilli like that and a bit of garlic. Mm -hmm. And we just start to warm this up. Now, this is the key to the sauce. San Marzano tomatoes in a tin. These have been blended. You can yeah. buy them whole, uh, as in tin tomatoes, or you can buy them blended. But what you do when you, when you get to this stage is you take the tomatoes and these go in here. And what you do now is you cook this sauce and you cook it for a decent amount of time. As long as you want to cook it for an hour, you can cook for five minutes, it's totally up to you, but this is going to be perfect with that, and I'm going to serve this with a ratatouille. Now, you're here to not talk about food, but to talk about this amazing new album that you, you brought out. This is the fourth album. Fourth album. Those people who are just waking up, this is the <laughs> album. We mentioned it earlier. Yeah, yeah. There's a great storyline that comes from this title. Where, what's, the, what's the idea with the title? Yeah, it's... Well, a, tell us about the title, first of all. The title, yeah. It's, um, well, like I said, I was, I was writing this album at a time when I was doing a bit of reflecting and all that kind of stuff, looking back. But um, the reason why it'll all make sense in the end as a title resonated with me is because uh, there's a little bit of a like fan theory, conspiracy thing that's gone on since I um, was on The X Factor. So there's a, a superhero called Multiple Man who's in the Marvel comic series. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, he comes to fruition in the X Factor series of the Marvel comics in, 2000, in 2012, which was the year that I won the show, and his real name is James Arthur, which is... You could write this, which is you? wild, Which is wild, absolutely yeah. wild. And, um, yeah, it's just wild. So the, the title of the comic book was It'll All Make Sense in the End, and uh, it just all kind of fitted with, with the theme of the, the album. And I forgot to mention earlier, when you, when you do a thing like the, the X Factor and that kind of stuff, it, yeah. it, it, it's quite tempting, it must be quite tempting, quite difficult to be pigeonholed. But yeah. you've managed to sort of do your own... and always kept your own voice and your own... Well, your own identity, haven't you, really? Which is what yeah. you strive for as a musician, I suppose, don't you? Yeah, do you know, I think I'm, I'm lucky, and I think uh, on the show, I sort of got the premise, and it was, you know, how do you make an ABBA song feel like a song that you'd written? You know, each, each week I enjoyed the challenge of, of trying to make these themes work for me. And, um, and that's because I knew who I was as an artist going into the process. You know, I knew who I wanted to be, what I wanted to sound like, what I wanted to say. And... Um, yeah, I think that's why I've been lucky enough to sustain a career beyond the show. It well, great. it's fantastic as well. Good luck with the album as well. So this, I'm just going to run through the ratatouille side of it. The key to ratatouille is add it in sequence. Don't just yeah. throw it all in. A lot of people yeah. throw it all in and boil it to bits. It tastes like all one vegetables. What you've got to do when you've got really good veg like this right. is to treat them individually. And that, I think that's the secret with vegetarian food and vegan food. Treat it with respect. Yeah. So you start off with garlic, onion, courgettes, peppers, aubergines, all diced up and nice and simple. We've got our tomatoes there as a pulp. First thing we're going to do is take our onions and our garlic, because that's going to take the longest to cook, all right? Next, when it, you're in there with the pan, only going to go in there for about 30 seconds. Next thing you're going to do is then think about what takes the longest out of these, because that's the thing they're going to go in next, which is usually the peppers. Peppers can go in. We can fry those for, a, for another sort of 30 seconds. And while those are frying, you can think about sort of something next. You then got your courgettes. They can go in as well. All the while, you can fire up the heat a little bit, but you, you can see already, you can see the colour of it. It's going to look nice, rather than just the, this mush. Yeah. Ratatouille should be all individually cooked veg, all just perfect, and taste really, really nice. Then, when you get to this stage, you've got the aubergines. Now, the reason why you've got plenty of oil in here, this is what's happened. Whenever you cook with aubergines, 
it actually sucks all the moisture out of the pan. You can see this already happening in here. All the, a lot of the moisture disappears. Keep this fired up. And then this is going to continue to fry very, very quickly. But at this point, then what we do is add our tomatoes. So these tomatoes can go in as well. So you say that you don't cook very much. I don't suppose you've got any time to cook, have you, really? Uh, no, I mean, I think the bigger problem is that I'm a bit lazy. I, I, I watch a lot of... <laughs> and honest as well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I watch a lot of cooking shows, that yours included, obviously, and uh, I like to think I've watched that many cooking shows that I could... You can I could, master it I, all. I could do it, and then I get in the kitchen, and I can't even do a beans on toast very well, to be honest, so... Um, I think I'll leave it to the experts like yourself. Well, I don't need to. You can spend your life going out and having dinners, can't you? That, yeah, that's exactly. well, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's it. So you, you're going to cook this now for a couple of minutes. At the same time, we're going to make a little bit of pesto. Pesto, really simple. We can do a, a walnut and basil pesto for this. It's just fresh basil yeah. in there. Take a good handful of salt in there. A little bit of black pepper. Yeah. So a good percentage of that. And a few walnuts. Amazing. You don't have to use uh, pine nuts. You can just use a few walnuts. You can use hazelnuts for this. It's entirely up to you. Yeah. A good glug of olive oil. A decent glug, like that. It's a key to life, isn't it? Oil. Key to life, a little bit of olive oil. Blitz it. Got yourself a pesto. Amazing. See? Amazing. We could set up a little business. James Arthur's Pesto Range. He makes that look so I could, easy. I could be in the background. Do you know what's funny about this? Is that took him about... Ten seconds, it'd probably take me an hour. <laughs> <laughs> an hour to find your blender find, if you had one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so this is the ratatouille, look. It's done. How have you made a bunch of chopped vegetables look that delicious? Well, that's the key to it. And then if you want to make it a little bit more liquid, you're using some of this sauce, look. Oh, wow. If you want to liquefy it a bit more. But the key to this, again, switch it off. Don't overcook it. You see, look, look at beautiful veg in there. Yeah. Season it. Salt. Black pepper. Look at that, it just looks... You know it's going to look good. Oh, wow. It's going to taste like a proper ratatouille. Like that. And then what we can do is then take this out and then start to plate this up. So we've got your tomatoes, which are in the oven, all right? You get to take your uh, pumpkin home, by the way. Do I? Yeah, you get to well, take I, this home. Can see? I show this to the camera? Yeah, of course you can. Oh, let's, let's, get, it, let's get it in shot. This yeah. is absolutely unbelievable. You get this. to take that home. So it's a lot. It's a lot more attractive than me, but <laughs> it's, like... it's beautiful. But look, yeah, thanks, Lolly. Really appreciate that. You've got a little bit of this pumpkin like this. There we go. So what's next for, for James Arthur then? What what's next for you? What what's <clears throat> what's the goal in life for you? Because you know, New Year next year. Yeah, yeah. New beginnings, what's next for you? What do you want to conquer? Because you've done so much. Is it you want to tour America a bit more? I mean, going on tour anyway, we yeah. mentioned that. But... Yeah, the tour, I mean, to be honest, you know, uh, it's been a weird 18 months for all of us, and um, I was lucky enough to to make this album. I kind of got my studio set up in my house, and I, and I made a bit of a passion project with this album. It's, um, so it'd be interesting to see how people react to that when it comes out in the first month of uh, November. They're going to... They're gonna, little J plug, little plug there. James, they're going to love it, trust yeah. me. I've been listening to it uh, all week now. It's, it's fantastic. And like yeah. I said, Emily is, is the highlight of the track that I've... Bless that you, It's you. absolutely fantastic. That's very uh, kind. Best of luck with everything as well. But it is quite cool having a studio in your own home, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, uh, it's... Yeah. <laughs> but you have a lot less people than what I do uh, yeah, wandering well, I do. around your house. But, yeah, it's, it's quite good, though, well, isn't it? My house is definitely not as cool as this, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, it just, it just means that you can be creative whenever you want. And uh, similarly, similar to this, I guess, you can come in here and not many people have kitchens like this at home. It's, it's, it's quite inspiring, this. Um, yeah. If, if I get an idea for a song at 12 o'clock at night, I can just jump in the studio and, and put it down, which is... Uh, it's fantastic. Well, best of luck with everything. There you have your nice little tomato. What I've done with this is you take the leftover bits of basil yeah. and you blanch it and blitz it with a little bit of oil. A little bit of veg oil, and you I'm end up... I think we like the, the use of the word blitz. It gets used a lot. You just blitz it in that. Blitz it in that, yeah. Blitz it in that with a little bit of oil. But there you have it. Cool, that was a Simple amazing. little roasted tomato filled with ratatouille, a wonderful little tomato sauce, wow. uh, with a little bit of walnut and basil pesto. Done. That deserves yeah. a round of applause.
dive into that? Cannot wait. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Let's have a go. Taste the sauce first, and you won't believe that this is just... Taste the sauce. It's just out of... We're getting my cutlery the wrong way around. I've had, <laughs> had too much cognac. I've had six since I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Taste that ratatouille inside and everything else is... Just get a good little fork full. You get this whack of flavour. Oh, my days. <laughs> no, you have to come back to me in a few minutes, I mean. <laughs> This is insane. I feel sorry for the sound guys here. It's nice, though, isn't it? Oh, my days. Bless you, mate. That's magic, honestly. It's magic. It's, what you do is great as well. Thank it's you very much for being here. Uh, James Arthur, everybody. Amazing. Brilliant, that. Well, that's it. That's all we've got time for today. A massive thank you to my guests, Holly Bell, for all these amazing pumpkins, uh, Michael Keynes, Maria Close, and, of course, the fabulous James Arthur. Good luck with the album. Yeah. Good luck with the tour. Uh, we'll see you back here same time next Saturday morning. We'll be joined by chefs Tom Hunt and Ravinda Bogle and top country duo Ward Thomas will be here. Until then, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now. Wow. It's lovely, isn't it? So good, man. So <laughs> I want to eat this whole dish, I'm not going to lie. That's all right.